This is Georgia's mightiest river. It's not the Chattahoochee, not the Savannah, not the Flint. This is the Altamaha. It is the second largest river basin on the entire Atlantic seaboard. It is undammed, it flows freely. Its banks, for the most part, are virtually wild. And yet the Altamaha, this natural wonder, is unknown to most Georgians. Some folks in South Georgia say the Altamaha is where God comes to think force of nature, powerful, yet serene. This river is where I come to more or less like get away from it all. It brings a calmness and a sereneness over my body that like nothing else. James Holland was a crabber on the coast for 23 years, but he hung it up when the blue crabs declined. I came to the conclusion that it was something that we had done to the system uh, that caused a depletion and decline in the crabs and those numbers. And I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to see if I could do something about it. So he became the Altamaha's river keeper. He can wind through its eddies and backwaters, glide along its coursing currents, and never tire of its isolation. The river has such classic beauty with the greenery along its sides and the, the, the cypress and the old tupelo gum and the white oak and the willows grow along the, the banks of this river. It is, it's an extremely beautiful river. The scenery changes during the river's 135 mile run. There are sunny sandbars, shady swamps, even grassy marshes as you approach the Atlantic. In the 1700s, rice plantations thrived in this delta. Old docks still stand as reminders of times gone by. But unlike most other Georgia rivers, the Altamaha is untamed. It is still wild, a glittering jewel in Georgia's treasure chest. Why should Georgians care about this river? It is a globally unique and important river system. It's just a treasure that we have here in Georgia and it's our responsibility to take care of it. Christy Lambert has studied this river habitat for more than a decade. You guys gotta check this out. These are swallowtail kites. The swallowtail kites nest along the Altamaha, just one of 125 rare and endangered species that survive here. The Altamaha's exceptional diversity might lead some to call it a little Amazon. Others compare it to the Nile. The Indians had their own description. When they talked about the Altamaha, they talked about from the big water to the shining rock. And when they, when, they, when they were talking about this, the big water meant the Atlantic Ocean, and the shining rock meant Stone Mountain, Georgia. The Altamaha's watershed does stretch all the way to Atlanta. Its tributaries drain half of Atlanta's land service and all of Macon's. In middle Georgia, two big rivers, the Okmulgee and the Oconee, meet head on at what's called the Forks. This is the source where the Altamaha claims its name on the map and begins its journey to the sea. It's a lonesome journey. Only five roads cross the Altamaha up along its 135 miles. At Darien, the Altamaha disgorges 100,000 gallons of water a second into the Atlantic. No wonder it's called the mighty Altamaha. A hundred years ago, Darien was the end of the line for timbermen who floated giant timber rafts down the river, bringing logs to market. It was a rugged 12-day journey, which started, appropriately enough, at Lumber City. I saw a few rafts when I was a boy. I went aboard a couple of them. It was just a, a large group of logs that were tied together with, with spikes and chains so that they would float as a unit. Roy McGregor and Max Strickland remember the log rafts from childhood. Max's father was a raft hand. And these things were, were how long? I mean, these were trees. 100 feet trees. long. That was a, a typical tree. They would, just for, to manage the thing, they would cut them 100 foot long. It must the, have been awfully difficult to steer something like that. It was very difficult, and sometimes they couldn't steer them, and they would bump into a sandbar or something, and they would try to pole it around and, and get it to where it would go downstream again. And uh, it, it weighed, you know, many tons, as you can imagine. 
The timbers from the Altamaha helped build famous structures like the Brooklyn Bridge, but continuous logging left the land scarred. During the late 1800s, loggers decimated the longleaf pine, a stately tree valued by shipbuilders for the straightest, tallest masts. Longleafs once covered 90 million acres in the southeast. Now only 3% of those trees are left. A handful of places have old growth longleaf which have never been cut. Moody Forest Natural Area near Baxley is one such place. This is exactly what it looked like 200 years ago. And there's very few places you can go to and, and see a site that hasn't been disturbed. Scott Saucier says an entire ecosystem depends on the longleaf pine, particularly the rare red cockaded woodpecker. Not far from the longleafs of Moody is an even more impressive forest. A forest that can quickly become a swamp when the nearby Altamaha rises. Moody Swamp is full of magnificent cypress trees. These are the knees of those cypress trees. The trees themselves tower over this area, some of them five to 600 years old. In this enchanted forest, shadows and sunshine play hopscotch, and an imagination can run wild. At least that's what two sisters who grew up playing here say. And it's just like Mother Nature made it and left it, and that's the way we love it. Barbara Moody Fennell and Joe Moody Branch have more memories here than the swamp has trees. Their ancestors settled the area a century ago, never cutting the timber. I well, just wanted to keep it forever, I reckon, from generation to generation. Yeah, they just loved the land, and they, like, they wanted it to stay just like they found it. <laughs> they didn't want it destroyed. It was a simple plan and a simple life. This cabin was their grandparents, once a lively social place, but eventually the last sibling who owned this cabin and the land passed away. Six years ago, the remaining heirs put the forest up for auction, <laughs> nervous about what might become of it. The Nature Conservancy of Georgia won the bid, ensuring preservation of the forest. I was glad, I was a thank the Lord, because there were timber companies bidding on it, along with the Nature Conservancy. And I was sitting there saying a silent prayer all the time. The Nature Conservancy and the Department of Natural Resources now jointly manage the 4,300-acre preserve. It's special somehow. But other areas in this river habitat are threatened. In 2002, the group American Rivers cited the Altamaha as the seventh most endangered river in the United States mostly because of water withdrawals upstream. There is also a problem with pollution. As riverkeeper, James patrols the river looking for polluters, both large and small. Uh, no one owns this river. No one owns a part of it but Georgia. South Carolina, Alabama, Florida, no one. So it's a very unique system in the fact that it's ours. And if we mess it up, we can't say someone else did it. From the broad, rushing waters of the Altamaha to a place where the water moves hardly at all. And yet the scenery is every bit as spectacular. 